Hey everyone, I'm Sebastian and this is Sarah. Sarah's going to help us out by demonstrating some exercises and stretches you can do for your runner's knee. This is going to be a follow along video. I actually encourage you guys to bookmark this video and come back to it again tomorrow because a lot of times people need to do these exercises daily for usually about a month or so. We're gonna have a countdown timer in the corner which is gonna pop up, which is gonna count all of the exercises for you. So we're gonna jump right in. All right, the first few exercises are gonna pop up on the box here, you can use a chair, okay? The first one is called seated knee extension. So go ahead and prop your knee out and go ahead and give some pumps at that. Everyone just take a note that when Sarah's doing this, she's trying to push downward through the joint, it shouldn't be going through pain, but Sarah, show them what people typically do. It's like they're massaging their quad. We're not trying to massage the quad here, we're trying to push straight down and explore the end of the range of the movement, okay? A lot of times the first 10 reps for people does not feel really great, but as they start to go more, they start to realize that their pain dissipates, it starts to feel better, and then as they start pumping more and more and more, things tend to get better. She's using a little bit of approach of spiraling as well. The bottom hand will spiral outward as the inner hand spirals inward, but it's not dominating the movement. It's just typically down and rep and rep and rep and keep going. And we're gonna change to the next one, which is called the skin rolling of the knee. For this one, do a slight bend in your knee, okay? And we're gonna take chunks of skin and we're gonna make paths outward. Go ahead and show them that, Sarah. Good. So she's almost taking her fingers and kneading it through the dough of the skin and she's covering all regions of the knee. This helps out a lot of times to de-stiffen some of the fascia around the knee and loosening things up is pretty good, especially relating to pain underneath the kneecap. So sometimes the fascia is really tight and it just needs to be worked out a little bit and this is a really quick easy way to do so. And so sometimes going in that direction as she started like that. And then you might find out through a bottom range that you can't really go this way, so you have to change directions. And so do paintbrush strokes that way now. That's fine. Yep. And we're only gonna do this to the knee that's involved. She's also going to spin to the camera a little bit too. I see that you're working into the, the fun area here, mm -hmm. which is on the inner part of the knee. It can be pretty tender, mm -hmm. but it's a really good spot to go to. The next one we're gonna do is called a pigeon stretch. Go ahead and come on the ground. And we're done with this box now, or chair. Good. Right there, and show us a couple pigeons. Nice. How far can you go? About here. It's okay. What do you feel like stopping you when you do this? Um, the glute feels, on the right? Mm -hmm. So she should feel the glute on the right, that's perfectly normal. Sometimes people feel there's a pinching in their hip that's not good to do. A lot of times this needs to be modified. And she's just gonna go for a minute on this side before we change to the other one. Now, one thing that people often do as a mistake as well is go ahead and show them that background. So they just round their back. They're really not stretching their hip. They're not getting their glutes to stretch. They're just rounding their back. And so you want to stay nice and proud and show me the logo of your shirt there. And then it's like you're bowing to the queen. <laughs> nice. And one more time. And then we're going to switch sides. Okay. Perfect. This is the nice shin box position, 90-90 roughly, and 90-90, and then you're gonna slowly bow to the queen. Nice. And we're just gonna rep in, rep out. Don't hold this for too long. You're just kinda repping in, finding the stretch, and coming away from it. Repping in, finding the stretch, and coming away from it. This should not hurt again. It should feel like it's just stretching a larger area of muscle on the back side of the hip. But if you start to feel it, feel it creep up to your back or to the inner part of your hip, you might change the hip position or the knee position just a little bit, almost go like so, and just see if it changes it as well. Something else you can do too is you can change the angle that you're coming to. So she's coming here right now, but you can come this way more towards the camera. Sometimes different positions are better for different people. Now the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna go to something called a side plank. Go ahead and set up on that side. Okay. On this side? Yeah. We're gonna do both, so it really <laughs> won't matter too much. Slide back to me a little bit. Good, show them the best of your ability, a side, a side plank. Okay. Nice, come on down and up. Good, 
and let's keep that pace. So everybody, she's not really not doing a big break period. She's kind of up, pause, wait for a picture, down, hold, and go again. So it's usually about three, five seconds or so that you're down. She's going rather quick, quick, which is okay. She'll get more out of the exercise this way. And where do you feel this working? This whole side body. Okay, here. cool. So the cool thing with runner's knee is that if you engage the side of your body, get your obliques to work and part of your abdominal muscles and your hip, it tends to spare the knee. Because a lot of times with runner's knee, what you're really dealing with is the knee's taking too much of a hit. It's taking too much of the problem. And we need to share the load, the workload elsewhere. Let's go ahead and flip to the side. Okay. All right. Here we go again. Now, go ahead. If you take a look down at her feet, she's in tandem here. Sometimes people push a little bit firmly out of too much out of the top foot. We want to push out of this bottom foot more than anything else. And you might even notice that when you push really firmly out of the side of the bottom of the foot, you'll get more activation out of the obliques which is the bottom side of her body here, as well as the side of her hip. This shouldn't really create any knee pain. If it does, the next exercise that we're gonna do may be a good regression to this one, or you just don't go up quite as high, or you break for longer. There's a lot of different ways to modify this, but the fact of the matter is with runner's knee, we need to make sure that the side of the body is doing some of the work and support so the knee doesn't take the hit, okay? 10 more seconds. And then why don't we just stay on this side and we'll do a side bridge on this side, okay? Perfect. All right, go ahead and switch. Or right, here we go. So now she's gonna push really hardly into my finger with her knee. Go ahead. And then keep my finger under control as you come down. So very similar exercise. Um, this one's actually a little bit easier, but since you've already done a side plank, this one actually becomes pretty hard. And so she's gonna... You're smiling through the pain, huh? Yep. <laughs> good. Pain in a good way, right? Of course. Perfect. Now, at any point, if you guys are doing these exercises, you want to little, learn, learn a little bit more about what's going on with your knee, we do have some resources that you can watch as well. This is one of our exercise follow along videos. Subscribe for more of them. We have more of these coming with different parts of the body, including the knee. But if you want to learn more about why you need to do these exercises, there's going to be a link that pops up in the corner that covers a little bit more in detail of why they should be done. Five seconds. And switch sides. Great. All right, here we go again. No big breaks, huh? Nope. <laughs> now, as she's doing this, when she gets to the top, the way you can advance a little bit more is see if you can push your belt buckle into the hand in front of you and then come on back and go again and come on back. Now, some people feel, experience a little bit of pain in their sacrum or low back when doing this. It's not desired. Uh, if that is the case, I would maybe not go as high or come back to this exercise in a couple days and see if it changes. Some of the other exercises that we're doing can help out to reduce the amount of pain that you have there by building support around the area. And so the core, the hip are all really important, not only for the knee, but also for the back in the sacrum type of pain, the SI joint type of thing. We have 10 seconds left with this. And then we're going to work into something called a, a glute bridge. Go ahead and line your back. Nice. The glute bridge is a really nice, simple one for everyone to do. Go ahead and uh, show me what everyone's going to be doing. Nice. Now let's see about five reps of that. Notice that Sarah's really not taking a long break. She's just kind of repping through them, right? Mm -hmm. Where do you feel this working the most? Um, the backside of my glutes here. Okay, so the backside, like right kind of butt cheeks, like a large area of the butt cheek, right? Yes. So sometimes people feel this in a single spot in the butt cheek, like the piriformis, or they'll feel their hamstrings starting to cramp. Those aren't desirable effects with it. If that is the case, go ahead and uh, place your hands on your belly right here and put some pressure into your belly with your guts like you're blowing up a blowfish and go ahead and go again. We got about 10 more seconds with this and then we're gonna to go to something called a, a split squat and we're gonna do it for um, about a minute each side as well, but we're not really gonna go through a lot of reps, we're gonna go for holds. Okay, go ahead and pop up. Okay. So show us a split squat. Okay. All right, sink down to the range. There you go, right there. So Sarah's pretty strong, so she can hold a, a low range. Hold this for as long as you can. 
If you need a break, go ahead and slowly pop up, okay. go whoosh, okay. and then come back down again. Now this is a non-painful range for her knee. If it was painful in the front or in the inner part, we'd shy right out of that range. Good. And so this is okay to do as well. But if it starts to creep on, it's too much too soon. But we got to keep the knee loaded to keep it stable. All right, runner's knee, you need to make sure that the knee is, continues to stay stable. You're holding that thing, aren't you? I know, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people feel a little hip flexor stretchy on the backside too. In that case, bring your body weight a little bit more onto your front foot so it takes some of the weight away from that side. We got five seconds left. Right. And then we're gonna mm -hmm. switch. All right, switch. Oh, you didn't move side. Okay, oh, perfect. Yeah. No, you're good there. <laughs> I'll just switch back. Okay. okay. So, same thing. She's by the wall in case she needs balance. All right, that's cool. Sometimes it helps out to just put a little bit of like a fingertip on something. It's just enough to give you a little bit of a balance, but not too much. Now, we've got about 30 more seconds of this. You should feel your quads burning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you guys are still dealing with this and you've been doing this thing for about a month, oh, you're taking a little break, huh? A little bit. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> My weak leg. Normally, things will start to improve over the course of a month if you're doing the right thing, all right? If you guys need help, we can help you. We have virtuals and in-persons available. We're at Performance Place Sports here in Costa Mesa. Some people say we're locally world famous. It's a joke because it's local and world famous at the same time. <laughs> so three, two, one, and come on back up. Good, go ahead and take a break. We're gonna show them real quick of where the, so runner's knee is right around this region here, and it feels like it's deep under the kneecap, almost like it's a grinding type of feeling. If you're dealing with something on the inner part or the patellar tendon or in the hamstring re region, these still may work for you, but there may be particular exercises coached in a specific way that'll help you even more than this circuit we're doing right here. So bookmark this video, thumbs up and subscribe it. Come back tomorrow, do the same circuit again and see how you feel. You might be very surprised about how it makes you feel. If you guys want help from us, we're always available. Our, this, our, uh, our contact is in the description below. Now let's get into the short anatomy and mechanics lesson regarding runner's knee. Um, at the very end, I'm gonna show you a bonus exercise that I think can be helpful to decrease reoccurrence of runner's knee. The exercises that I showed you first here Again, I want you to do it on a daily basis. They're intended to minimize pain, minimize discomfort, and to restore function, a lot of times you have to do something further. And so I'm gonna show you one of my favorite exercises at the very end here as well. To understand the anatomy of the knee, we should use a model, all right? This is the front of the knee. This is the side of the outer side of the knee of the leg. This is the inner part, and here's the back part, all right? In particular, runner's knee, what we're mainly considered of is this area right into here. And so this is the quad group, quad group muscles here. This is your vastus medialis that a lot of times people will blame for runner's knee. This is your uh, patellar tendon, and this is your quad tendon right into here, okay? So uh, deep underneath there, as you can see, we have the meniscus of the knee, one of the men menisci. Uh, and then we have the kneecap right into here on the side. As you can see, I can move that kneecap. Underneath the kneecap is the femoral condyles uh, or the groove right into here that the kneecap sits. Now the area that's the most um, troublesome on people, it tends to be the area where the kneecap contacts the femur or the femoral groove. With runner's knee, a lot of times when people become very knee dominant, as you start to stretch this area here on the front side, with knee bend, it tends to drive the kneecap into the femoral condyle, um, specifically the lateral one, and it starts to create a little bit of compression and irritation underneath it. Now, historically, what they've uh, tried to do in some of these cases is they've tried to release some of the musculature on the outer side of the knee. Um, but they found some research uh, back in, I think it was 2010, I think it's Powers, where they figured out that uh, lateral knee tracking, where the knee cap was moving to the outside, rubbing on the outer femoral condyle, was actually not super correct. And so this scenario here, where the knee cap moves to the side, but actually this does not move to the side, what happens is, is the femur turns in. And so if you look at it, it's relative motion. In this case, the knee cap is moving to the side, 
In this case, the femur is moving in, but the kneecap is staying stationary, still creating contact on the same point, but it gives us a better idea of how to manage this condition. And so people who have uh, lateral tracking of the knee or patellofemoral pain or runner's knee or whatever you want to call it, oftentimes it's not a problem of the quad group, it's a problem of the hip or the ankle. And that's why a lot of the exercise that we show for runner's knee, it, it, we're reducing the amount of insult, which is the bend of the knee, and we're exposing it to things like extension for a little bit, settling things down, if you will, managing pain. And then we need to get the core, the pelvis, and the hip to cooperate, all right? Some of you actually may try a little test like so, where you try a little squat, you're just doing like this, right? And then they squat down and say, oh, that, that kind of hurts, you know? But if you push your knees out a little bit and you squat down, for a lot of you, it may not actually hurt at all. And so this is almost a synthetic way of getting the femur to externally rotate and keep the patella or the kneecap tracking in a better position. This is probably not the best way to uh, coach a squat, but it gives you a good example of how those things are important, all right? Again, if you're landing here, and your knee dives in, it's not a problem with the knee, it's the problem with this area not doing its work and, and pulling out and keeping you stacked. You're asking too much of the kneecap as it rubs onto the area of the femur. One of my favorite exercises then to get people back into running is to simulate something like single leg stance. And so this is what it's gonna look like. Um, you don't need to see the top of me too much, but I just want you to pay attention to this bottom half, just as I kind of showed you here a second ago. A lot of times people will do this kind of uh, reach bowler exercise, but they're kind of sloppy with the whole thing, all right? A good way to do it is to actually take the back foot here and act like you're going to slide it really slowly across a frozen pond here, all right? At this point, all you're going to do is take this opposite hand and reach far and low. And the lower that you reach, the more you're going to start to feel your butt cheek on the stance leg start to engage. I'll do it showing towards the camera so you can see that I'm pushing back, sliding across a little bit, reaching far, and reaching far and a little bit across here. I'm crossing the midline of my foot. And when you do that, you'll start to feel your stance leg butt cheek just go, go nuts, like in a good way. The reason why this is helpful is because if you're going to control things like hip drop and um, improve your running gait so you don't have uh, runner's knee and patellofemoral pain develop, it's easiest to coach in a non-running position or a running position but not running. Stationary, weight training. So a lot of times people who have patellofemoral pain or runner's knee, we need to get them back into some form of weight training that's being coached. That way they're actually doing the weight training appropriately so it carries, o carries over into a quicker movement like running. So if you guys are looking for more information on runner's knee, we do have uh, stuff available on YouTube which is gonna pop up at the very end of this video. If you guys want some help, we can help you. We'd love to help you, actually. You just have to reach out to us. So we have customized programs that, that we can develop for you. Customized weight training, customized uh, corrective exercise, uh, and we can help you virtually or in person. So it's your choice. All of our contact information is at the bottom. We'll see you guys next time. Please like and subscribe to this channel.